Welcome to DOS Geek. So far, we've covered some amazing topics the past few weeks. The dark web, how to access it with Tor. We've talked about tales and the privacy and security that these provide you and new ways to explore the internet. We've also debunked the myths that the dark web is only for nefarious purposes and things along those lines. I've taught you how you can create a website, your own dot onion website yourself. And today I want to talk about decentralized applications. Specifically, we're going to kind of focus on some of the things in the Fediverse. And if you're not subscribed to the Destination Linux podcast that I'm a host of, you need to. The podcast is insanely good. We have other hosts on there, Jill, Michael, and Noah from the Ask Noah Show that join us to discuss these things. And this upcoming episode, which will be live on Sunday, we're going to go deep into the Fediverse. So if you don't know what that is, you'll get some feeling for it here. But we're going to go deeper into it in that episode. So make sure that you tune in to that on Sunday at around 1 p.m. Eastern. Now, before we get into these decentralized applications or social networks and things, I want to talk about something like we did with the dark web really quickly, because I know someone's going to leave the comment that these services are for extremists or political hate groups. And I just want to go ahead and put that idea to bed. These services that are on things that are decentralized, like a Fediverse, do not mean that they're moderation free zones. They don't mean that you can go anywhere you want, say whatever you want, do illegal activities and get away with it. In fact, I'm going to make the argument that the Fediverse actually has far better moderation capabilities and allows you as an individual to take control of the content you see and you don't see better than any large centralized platform like a Facebook or Twitter could ever do. So what I want to do is take you through some of these services that are out there show them to you, let you see how awesome they are, and then we'll talk about why they're actually a much better alternative and, in my opinion, far safer and better for our privacy and security than the centralized platforms out there that you may be used to. Let's get into it right now. So the first one we're going to start with is Mastodon because Mastodon has over 4 million users on it. It's an equivalent to Twitter. If you've been on Twitter before, you've got a limited character set that you can send out called a tweet. And in this case, very similar, you send out a toot. I, it's an elephant thing. It's not the other variation. I, I don't know why they did that. It's kind of silly. But anyways, that's what they do. It's a very popular decentralized social application. And the great thing is it's not centralized. So you can have multiple instances. I can even create my own instance right now on, of course, our sponsor, DigitalOcean, if I wanted to and create my own Mastodon instance. And because there are protocols in place that allow me to communicate across these, so open source standards that allow me to communicate across these various servers and connect them all together, my instance can talk to your instance or the main instance of Mastodon, for instance. And because I own that server, nobody can take that down. And I have the ability to control and moderate what takes place on that. If I decide instead I want to join somebody's existing instance, then I'm under their moderation rules. And they have plenty of moderation tools in Mastodon to make sure that certain content is not allowed and is can be removed and people can be banned and things like that. See, it doesn't take away these decentralized applications, moderation. What a good decentralized application does do is it allows you to be back in control of what you see and what you do on those social networks. So if you don't want to see certain content, you can create your own instance or join one that doesn't allow that. And then the community itself moderates. And because it's not some gigantic Facebook like entity with 300 million plus photos uploaded a day, which is impossible to hire enough staff to moderate or create AI capable of moderating that and allows people to post hundreds of millions of posts every single day, which is impossible to moderate as we've seen. These smaller subsets and communities and servers that are owned by the individual, these communities can moderate much, much easier with the tools that are provided through Mastodon and I'll show you, this is what my feed looks like. And yes, go ahead and follow at, at DOS Geek there. I don't have my own server for Mastodon. If there's enough interest in it, I'd be happy to create one because I love creating servers and stuff like that. 
I have notifications if people follow me or people leave comments to me directly. I have hashtag Linux up so I can see any comments that are using the hashtag Linux. And then I have my federated timeline. This is anything going on in the specific federation that I'm a part of. Now, if I click on my own name here, I get additional information such as that I'm on the mastodon.social instance. So let's say, for instance, the mastodon.social admins get together and they go, this is not the type of video we want. We don't want people talking about decentralized applications. You're banned. Then guess what happens? I can go and join another instance that does like the type of content that I do, and I'm not permanently removed from this one community like I would be if I was banned from Facebook or banned from Twitter, or I could create my own community of individuals and have my own moderation rules in place. It puts me back in control. The other great social network out there to check out is Diaspora. That's how I pronounce it. I don't know if that's the correct way, but in any case, it's very similar to Mastodon in that it's decentralized. It uses the Fediverse. So again, those common protocols work together. In this case, you're creating what they call pods. So you set up your own pod if you want, and you have the ability to host your own content and be in full control of it. You can also join other people's pods that are out there. If Mastodon is like Twitter, then Diaspora is like Facebook. So if you're more of a Facebook person, you're finally looking to get away from it, you want something decentralized where you're in control, this is the application for you. Now, if you go and look at my actual page here, and I've not been very active on this network at all, but you can see I can set up tags for the type of content that I want to see. Once again, I'm in control. If I don't want to see politics, which I don't, and I don't care about your personal politics, which I don't, then I don't have to subscribe to anybody here that talks about politics. I get to know about computers, geeks, hardware, Linux, open source, Python, security, technology, the things that interest me. And that way, when I look at my stream, those are the type of things that I see. I'm in control of what I see and what I don't and who I interact with and who I don't. And if I wanna take my personal information down, I can. Additionally, you notice my page isn't full of ads and people trying to sell me things. This is one of the most powerful parts of this decentralized network. It really wouldn't make sense to start throwing ads and things onto these networks. So the way people make money in these services is you donate to them for the servers that you use. If you're not gonna create your own server, then donate to these servers that are out there. There's also fundraisers and things like that that go on for this project overall which they're 38% of their goal. I hope they hit their full funding here because I think these type of decentralized networks are the future and it allows you to now be in control instead of one company deciding what you should see, what you can't see, what you're allowed to post and moderating to the best of their ability, millions and millions of people, which means they make tons of mistakes and you could lose access to all your friends, all of your history of things that you've done or you won't be able to ever go back and remove things because they keep it forever, sell your data, you're not in control of anything. And that's very different here in these type of services. PeerTube is an alternative to something like YouTube. Now, a lot of people who got kicked off of YouTube for various reasons that a lot of times had nothing to do with politics or anything else, just unfair policies across the board, People decided they didn't like them, so they reported them, or companies were doing copyright strikes against things that they didn't have any right to copyright strike against. And that's where services like PeerTube comes in. Now, PeerTube is very interesting because it also uses the Fediverse in there. You can host your content both on YouTube and PeerTube if you want. There's nothing saying you can only use one service there, but there's certainly much more freedom in this decentralized service that you can utilize and implement. And again, you can join people's instances and host your videos there. You could, of course, host your own if you wanted to as well. There's a very similar service that personally I like better. And this is really interesting because it doesn't use the Fediverse. It actually uses blockchain. And this one is called Library. Now, Library is something where you can download an app and do your surfing there. Or if you want to do it from a browser, you can go to odyssey.com. And this is where you can browse what's happening in library from your browser. And there is all kinds of different content on here. There's probably content you 
don't want to see, depending on your viewpoints, there's it's free, right? And you make the decision of what you want to see and what you don't want to see. But these are alternatives to things like YouTube who can decide tomorrow to take away your entire paycheck, to take away your entire livelihood if you make your living off of YouTube. I personally don't, but I still post every video because they have awesome services like the ability every time I post on YouTube, it automatically comes over here into library. So if I was ever taken down, then people could still get my content on library. I know you're like, gosh, thank goodness I get his content because I'm not on YouTube for the food videos. There's another service out there for things like photo sharing. So if you're an Instagram junkie, you know the privacy issues that these services have. Something like PixelFed, it uses the actual Fediverse as well, free ethical photo sharing program. So if you wanna share your photos of your food, or if you're an actual photographer and wanna take photos of forests or whatever, and wanna share those with the world, this is a really cool place to go do that. So what I'm sharing with you is there are a bunch of decentralized services that you can utilize from across the board, whether you want a Twitter replacement, Facebook replacement, Instagram replacement, there are services, YouTube replacement for those things here. If you wanna take back control of your privacy, of your security, what you post online, and not have any one person deciding, one giant company, centralized company deciding your future and the importance of social networking, that's where they got us, right? Social networking has been such an amazing thing, but then the big companies came in and they're kind of ruining it. So this is a way for us to finally take this stuff back. And that's why this is so important for you to go check out these services and support them because they're only as good. It's, it's like opening a club. It's only as good as the amount of people that you have there. If the dance floor is empty, nobody's gonna go dance. So we can fill these people up by going to these places and utilizing this stuff and basically giving a big middle finger to Facebook and Twitter and all of these other services out there that attempt to control your data, serve you ads, and well, be terrible people in a lot of cases. So real quick here, we have Element, which a lot of people knew as Matrix. This would be a replacement for things like Telegram out there. It also has video conferencing capabilities. Uh, through Rocket Chat, I think built into it. This is something where Destination Linux ourselves, we've created an instance for our internal podcast crew. Uh, maybe in the future we'll open it up, but we also have instances that are open to the public out there. But we have our own server hosted out there for Element. It's a fantastic, amazing service. You can have encrypted messages. Again, you're in control, but you can talk across the various servers that are out there. So you can join a public one or you can make your own, but everybody can communicate because there's a standard protocol there being used. So it's definitely growing out there amongst the privacy enthusiasts and something that I highly recommend you check out. And again, you can of course follow me on there. And if you're a patron of my channel, you get access to my DOS Geek patron only chat out there on Matrix as well. And of course, we wouldn't be complete if we didn't have an open source place for building and writing blogs and things like that. So you can look at services like Write Freely here, which allow you again to be in control, uh, made for writing, minimalist blogs, published to the Fediverse, easy on the eyes and the servers. So if you're out there, you wanna get your thoughts into the community in a blog-like format, this is something to check out. Now, one of my favorite services on the planet and the sponsor of this channel, is DigitalOcean. Now, if you go to do.co slash DLN, they're gonna give you a hundred dollars of credit to play around with. And what can you do with that hundred dollars of credit? Well, you can go to their marketplace, one click installation and set up, for instance, your own Mastodon instance. So if you want your own Fediverse server on Mastodon, you can go do that. You click on the marketplace, you click that, it's gonna drop that server for you as little as $5 a month and you'll have your own instance of Mastodon. All you gotta do is go to do.co slash DLN and check that out. You're gonna get $100 of credit to play with for the next 60 days. That's gonna give you a lot of time to go play with different servers, set different things up, it build, deploy, manage, scale apps, support Node.js, Python, Go, PHP, Ruby, static sites, Docker, zero infrastructure management, highly scalable, this taught me so many things about setting up networks because I could go set up a server, deploy WordPress or whatever I wanted. If I make a mistake, no big deal. I can just destroy the server and build another one. 
I don't have to pay the power bill related to have my own home servers. I don't have to worry about the security of all of that, of somebody breaking into my home server and getting to all of my other computers because I'm using DigitalOcean's platform. They have amazing cloud agnostic tutorials to teach you how to lock down your servers when you set them up in the cloud and just everything imaginable out there. So go to do.co slash DLN, get your $100 credit, set up your own Mastodon instance. If you want to know more about the Fediverse and decentralized applications, check out the upcoming episode of Destination Linux. You can watch it live, dlnlive.com, Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern. That's dlnlive.com. Go there. You'll see four of us talking about the Fediverse and all of the awesome applications of it and services like Matrix and PeerTube and uh, Spora, and I don't know how to pronounce that. All of these cool services that we talked about, we will be covering in far more detail. So check out that episode there. I hope you've enjoyed this. I've got a new computer I wanna show you all that's pretty cool too. So we'll probably be switching some subjects up in the upcoming videos. Let me know in the comments below if you like this, cause I'm thinking about maybe doing how to stay secure, privacy thing, kind of a refresh on some of the videos I've done in the past overall, how to stay safe online. If you have interest in that, let me know in the comments below. And until next time, decentralize yourself from all of these centralized platforms. Be safe out there. Privacy is important. But most of all, you got to get out there and fill your brains. <laughs>